What's up guys? An article from the Times of Israel today, Tuesday. Why did Israel think a border fence would protect it from an army of terrorists? So really interesting, right? Israel, the size of New Jersey, and a bunch of, uh, you know, neighbors around them that, that wanted to destroy Israel. <clears throat> and all they had was a fence around their borders. I'm going to uh, read a few quotes from this article and then tie it into some scripture and kind of piece together where I think we are currently, you know, in these last days and then some next prophetic things on the timeline that uh, are coming and perhaps a little bit sooner than later. All right, from this article, and they were talking to many people, gave a good history of Israel, uh, talking to Colonel Yehuda Vak. Uh, he was a commander of the officer training school, published some insights in a 2019 article in the IDS Dato Center Journal. The officers told him that Hezbollah and Hamas are knocking on the fence and understand that they don't need to penetrate deep into Israeli territory to make strategic gains, but simply need to cross the fence and carry out attacks and kidnapping near the border. The commanders were well aware of the threat of kidnapping attacks, but were not confident were not confident that they could stop all attempts. Quote, because we don't cross the fence, the other side has become strategically stronger, wrote Bach. The enemy conducts a strategy around the fence while we guard the fence with small and weak forces. The enemy will seek in the next campaign to carry out an operation to kidnap soldiers and harm civilians in the towns near the fence, thus enjoying the first achievement of the campaign. That is what we just saw the other day on October um, 7th, 2023. They just, just breached into the borders, killed soldiers, killed civilians. Quote, the fence creates an illusion and gives a false sense of security to both the soldiers of the Israel Defense Forces and the residents near the fence. So that's all Israel had kind of protecting its borders. They're more defensively minded than offensive. Man, you know, this is interesting. I think all the heads of, of, of government across the earth, like, <laughs> I think they're probably all, you know, probably worshiping the devil. They're, they're probably compromised and uh, corrupted. I mean, even Netanyahu, who I've always appreciated, and even Trump, who I've always found refreshing and kind of fun, speaks it like it is. You know, right wing, left wing, same dragon. <laughs> Um, anyways, so the fact that Israel was being defensive-minded, you know, and the devil will plan things for decades. He'll play that long game, and even longer. And could it be like these leaders of Israel were just kind of opting for, we're going to have a fence, and we're going to just be defensive, and, um, you know, we'll just watch our borders. <clears throat> because things are so calculated and orchestrated, so much is fake in political theater. You know, could the, the powers that ought not be have known that, you know, there's going to be the Chinese virus, which happened, and then lockdowns and stealing more freedoms, and then financial crisis across the face of the earth, where we are now, and um, knowing that, you know, war can kick that can down the road, war is a money maker, and could, you know, the heads of Israel have been you know, told people to stand down within. We're going to have to let a breach happen. Some citizens are going to have to pay the price, but it's for a greater good. What we're going to do is now go to war, and we're going to lose a few citizens, but maybe, you know, they were thinking, I'm just speculating, but maybe they were thinking, you know, we'll wipe Hamas and all these <clears throat> enemies of ours completely off. We'll destroy them. You know what I mean? Because a breach is super suspect. Um, the fact that they've been just defensive-minded and only had a fence. And it's so terrible to think that, that your government would do that. But of course, government is not for us. Um, many of you guys have learned that and understand that. And they're corrupted. So if that's what happened in Israel, you know, I mean, the Lord will judge those people who did such um, collusion and such uh, conspiring to do such wicked things. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 38. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, 
the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, etc., etc. I will turn it, put hooks in your jaws, I will bring you out, all your army, Persia, Cush, and put are with them. So we got armies from the north, that's Russia, Turkey, and Iran. We got from the south, Persia, Cush, and put, what is that again? Uh, I don't know if it's like Ethiopia, um, Sudan, anyway, some northern African uh, countries. They're going to all come out with helmet and uh, with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his hordes, Beth Togarma from the uttermost parts of the north, with all hordes. Many people are with you. Okay. Now here, verse 7. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you. And be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years, towards the end of time, here we are. You will go against the land that is restored from war, Israel. They've had plenty of wars in their history. The land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel. A lot of people are going back to Israel in these last few years. As uh, you know, hatred of Jews continues to increase for another round in human history, Jews from many places are going back to Israel which have been a, had been a continual waste. Uh, Israel had been a waste, and you could look left to right, and it was just barren. I think it's Mark Twain writes about that when he uh, wrote about that when he visited. He said it's a wasteland. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. All right, so people have come back to Israel, dwell securely. We'll, we'll talk more about that. You will advance, coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land. You and all your hordes and many peoples with you. That's the horde from the north. And many people with you, those northern African tribes, they're going to come upon Israel. We might see this in our time. We might be caught away. and We'll never see it, but it's coming. Verse 10, Thus does the Lord, the Lord God, On that day, thoughts will come into your mind, and you will devise an evil scheme, and say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will fall upon the quiet people who dwell securely, all of them dwelling without walls and having no bars or gates. This really struck me as I read this article today <clears throat> about Israel just having fences, no walls, no gates, uh, unwalled villages. Wow, isn't that exactly what uh, Hamas did? They came into these neighboring villages no wall. They didn't have to use explosives. There was the, the devils who stepped down, and then the bulldozers, and then they were in. And then they killed innocent people. Uh, all of them dwelling without walls and having no bars or gates to seize spoil and carry off plunder. <clears throat> okay, so that jumped out at me. And uh, and this, this prophecy is coming when it talks about uh, seizing spoil and carry off plunder. Now, that's going to happen when Russia, Turkey, and Iran come, and they're all going to come with that motive and stuff. That hasn't happened yet. But this situation of Israel is what I want to focus on, which, and which is currently, that they're unwalled. You guys see what I'm saying? And if this is all tied together, where this has been like a plot and a scheme to have Israel kind of vulnerable like this for this next leg of demonic, you know, blueprint of, of what the devil wants to try to be doing... The devil is God's devil, like he's going to only do what um, he's allowed to do. All this bad stuff that's happening is Bible prophecy. It must be fulfilled, right? So these, uh, the unwalled villages is what jumped out at me. Um, Ezekiel 38, we're seeing the framework, we're seeing the setup. We're seeing just the environment of Israel currently. That is going to lead to the Ezekiel 38 prophecy being fulfilled. And I could read on and on, but guys, read the rest of 38. Many of you know it. Uh, it's amazing. No one is there to help Israel. Why do so many people hate Jews? They're God's people. Um, and of no thing that they did on their own, by God's just declaration, he chose them. He's like, I love you. You're special to me. And, you know, and, yeah, there's some Jews that are... Uh, they hate Jesus and they are lost just like of any ethnicity um, or whatnot but regardless like uh, we know from the book of Zechariah I think a third of Israel will be saved through the tribulation so two thirds will be lost I mean 
not all Jews are going to heaven and stuff like that. But the land is special to the Lord. The land is his people's land. His people are his people. Um, they are the children of God. We who believe on Jesus, we are the bride of Christ. There's different relationships here, but we are... Um, but, not to digress too much, but um, we're seeing the set of guys. So, you know, I was talking with a brother in a fellowship, and I'll wrap up with this, uh, last night. And he's been kind of waiting on the Lord and aware of the Lord's return for us since, like, I think he said the 80s. <clears throat> and um, so I was telling him, you know, Jesus is coming soon. And I was telling him I'd be surprised to see 2024 and stuff like that. And he seemed a little weary, you know. He's like, well, he's like, you're more excited than me. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, uh, and he told me kind of the history. And, you know, people were saying this and that and looking at this event and it didn't happen. And, yeah, I understand that because there's been times, I'd say in the last year for me, where I'm like, these are high times. These are high potentials where I felt, you know, close to certain that I'm like, I'm not seeing that next week or that next month. It hasn't happened. So I understand that rapture watch weariness. I do. But um, I try to encourage him. And I don't need to encourage myself too much because I'm still excited. I don't care. Titus 2, we are waiting for the appearing of our great God and King and Savior, Jesus Christ. One and the same, God and Savior and King. <clears throat> and I'll be watched until forever. Uh, if Jesus comes sooner than later or if he comes in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. I'm watching for Jesus. I'm excited about it. It's fun. Uh, everything is revealed in His Word. And as we see things pop up on the horizon in our life and reality, we can weigh things and, and compare things and say, could this be that? Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's like anybody talking to shop about business or sports or kids or family or whatever. Like you talk about things you're interested in. Uh, these, these speculations, these prognostications, like I don't think that's wrong. I know myself and, and people that I follow, nobody's picking a date. <clears throat> um, uh, nobody, none. We're looking at certain dates that we have um, in conjunction with signs of like in the heavens and stuff, just like Genesis uh, 1, 114 talks about. But it's exciting. It's fun. It's great. And these unwalled villages is just what I wanted to point out today. I'd be curious to hear from you guys if any of you guys have had that on your spirit as well when, when you've heard of, of how Israel just had like these fences and they didn't have walls and then how we hear of unwalled villages a couple times there in verse 10 and 11 now that's going to be the setup the physical layout of Israel at the time of the end in the latter years it says golly this is amazing guys we know history in advance through Bible prophecy I love it I love Bible prophecy and the Lord has constructed his word in such a way that it can hit different people in different ways. If you need the Psalms, if you need some kind of poetic, um, almost lyrical nuggets of truth, there you go. Proverbs, if you need almost like the Christian fortune cookie little snippets, there you go. If you need teachings from Christ Jesus' mouth, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, bam. If you need Bible prophecy, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, uh, Hosea, Zechariah, Revelation. Um, if you need the teachings from Paul, Christian living, um, order, and, and, and such things, and even some Bible prophecy. Um, yeah, you got the letters from Paul. History, you've got uh, the first, you know, um, the Old Testament, especially the first five books, creation, Genesis, right? So God's Word is excellent, and I wanted to point this one out about the unwalled villages. So tell me what you think about that, guys. I'd be very interested to hear what you think about that. So appreciate you guys watching my video. Have a blessed, excellent day. God bless you.